to show this. And somehow, if you, if you take this and compare it to the to the theorem of Faraday, of it's not so different. If, if you if you look at it, it somehow if I would just take it and somehow push it down, push it push uh, push this picture down. Yeah, then I would get exactly the statement of the row. It's nothing else. Right? If I would, I would just uh, be drawing this, drawing this, uh, drawing this case here like like this. Okay, so let's say I will, I will push this down, and I will take the function and somehow I will modify it. Now like this. Now the this connection is is horizontal, and there exists a point C such that F C is zero. So this is the statement of the row, and it's uh, it's in in uh, it's not very different from from the statement we had we had before. So the proof has to be very simple. So we can we can prove this prove this easily using using Rolle's theorem. But we will use we will apply this for a different function. So instead of function f, we will apply this to function h x, which is f x. But we will we will basically take take this thing and push it down. So so we will, and yeah, and then you need you need basically basically to compute this. But um, but like uh, but basically we will we will push it in such a way that we we want that h a is equal h b. Yeah. So we will subtract r times uh, r times x. Right, and then R is the the tangent of of this of this uh, line between A F and F, F A and uh, F B. Okay, so so we will take this function, and this function is still continuous because continuity is, is kept by the by the uh, summation of of two continuous functions, subtraction, multiplication, and stuff like this. Yeah, so so this function is still continuous, and it's still differentiable because uh, some of the of some of differentiable functions is a differentiable function. So this function satisfies the statement of the row. So there exists some point c such that h uh, derivative of c is zero. But what what is what is a derivative of c? There's nothing else that f derivative inside c minus derivative of of this thing here. But derivative of r times x is minus r. So we know that f minus f uh, derivative uh, of c is equal to r, and this is what the statement wanted. So this is exactly exactly the proof. So now we can return back back to that to the theorem uh, to that that nice nice property, and um, so we have points C and D, and we don't know what are the values F C and F D. So if if they would be, and we want to show that they are the same, but suppose that they would not be the same, F C and F D would be would be different. So it would be it would be some tangent. But then there exists, there exists some some value, some let's say key value uh, inside of of C D such that f derivative at the point he is uh, equal r. But since derivative everywhere is is zero, this was the statement. Yeah, so this this is equal zero. So this this is not decreasing, and this implies that f c is equal to to f d, and it holds for every pair c d inside of of a b. So we can conclude that f is truly constant function. Yeah, so 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 this is this is. Um, Proof of, of a very nice, very nice statement, but somehow it says, okay, so suppose I have an unknown function, but I know something about the derivative of the function, then I can also state something about the origin of function. It makes perfect sense, because if you have some unknown function, and you know the rate of change of this function, how fast it changes, then you should be able to say something about the values of the origin of function. So if we know, if we have a function which is not changing ev everywhere inside of the Gauss interval, then it makes sense that the function is constant if it's not changing at all. 
Yeah? So basically, if we, if we know something about the, the derivative, we can use this, this uh, mean, value, mean value theorem and we can, we can discover also something about the origin of function f. So uh, let, let me show you something more. So suppose that we have a function f such that uh, derivative of uh, f inside of some some interval a and b derivative is let's say uh, let's say uh, negative. What does it mean? That the function is decreasing. So we want to show that f is is decreasing. But you can do it in, in exactly the, exactly the same way. You take f c and f d. And by the mean value theorem, this, this connection, this, this tangent r is equal to derivative inside of, of some point, he, with, is, he lies inside c and d. But since the derivative is always negative, then this tangent has to be negative and the function has to decrease. Yeah? Similarly, you can show that if, if this uh, is smaller, smaller or equal, then it's non-increasing and uh, the other the other two non uh, then when it's larger it's increasing when it's larger or equal it's non decre uh, non decreasing and so on yeah so the, so the proofs are exactly the same if we know something we can we can we can say we can basically we can show something also so if you if you have a bound on on the size of the derivative then you can also show that the function is not too large yeah if i know that that uh, basically if I know, for example, that I have two functions f and g, such that f a is equal to g a, and then f derivative of h is always more or equal g derivative of h, uh, of x uh, for x larger or equal h, then I know, I know using using that uh, mean value theorem, uh, that I know that. Uh, f x is also smaller or equal g x. Yeah? So I have two functions which start at the same point, some g and some f. Yeah? If f is always uh, growing uh, at most as fast as g, then g is always at least as big as f. <laughs> this is logical, this is nothing, nothing surprising, but we can finally prove it, like formally exact, exact uh, proof, proof of this. Okay, so, um, so, so this is, this is, this is very, very, very nice, very nice, very nice statement of, of, uh, row and you can actually, you can actually, um, prove something even slightly stronger, some generalization, which is, which is, uh, called, uh, Cauchy, um, uh, mean value theorem and when you when you see it for the for the first time you start to think oh what the heck why, why, why should I really care about about this so it says not only that you have one function but you have two functions f and g again continuous on, uh, on the interval between a and b and uh, differentiable and then this this following following formula holds that there exists some some key point inside of a and b yeah so so both of them are uh, differentiable on let's say a and b open continuous uh, on closed interval a and b yeah so then if you look at derivative of uh, this ratio of derivatives inside of, of this key point this is exactly equal to f uh, a minus f b over g a minus uh, g b, and of course uh, these two hold uh, these two these two values have to be distinct, and also this this derivative has to be always non-zero. Yeah. So and since it's continuous, it can be over on a positive or a negative, and you can you can prove it exactly exactly in the same way using Rolle's theorem that you will consider the functions h x. Yeah, and this function h x is f x minus r, where r I will specify in a second, 
uh, this is actually, actually this this uh, statement but we will get to it times um, g of x so what what is the r value here so what we want we want that h of a and h of b is equal how we want so what about this h of a uh, h of a is f a minus r times g of a and h should be equal to, to f b minus r times g b so we just need to solve this this system of uh, this this equation which basically says what f uh, a minus f b yeah and then we put these r numbers on the other side this is r and we then we divide and it's uh, r of a uh, sorry uh, g of a min minus uh, g of b yeah so when we when we consider this against h is continuous is differentiable is equal so we can use roller there exists by roller's theorem there exists some point he inside of of a b such that h derivative of he is equal to zero but what what is h derivative it is this is um, f derivative inside of he minus r times derivative uh, minus r times uh, derivative of g now this this thing is equal to zero. In other words, it means that f derivative he uh, is equal to r times g derivative at point he, and in other words, that r is equal to f he over g prime he. Yeah, and this is what we wanted. That this because this r was exactly exactly what. What we have in in the statement of the in the statement of the of the theorem, this is equal r. Uh, so this this thing here is equal r, and, and therefore therefore we, we proved what what we wanted. Okay, so and, and there is, there is actually actually like a picture interpretation interpretation of of this, but uh, and also you could probably you could probably in, interpret it. Uh, also in other ways but what, what you can consider that you can consider a curve inside of a plane and this curves is like two two points x and y at time t so basically what you what you uh, do is, is um, you assign uh, basically to to time so you have some let's say curve c of time t is there f t and gt yeah? so so for example if uh, i don't know one function is, is linear and the other one is is um, constant then this this curve will behave like this and uh, i don't know if, if it would be sine it would be oscillating back and forth again so if one would be linear and the other would be sine it would be like this no, you can you can be, you can imagine like like there's a parametric curve given by by two functions. So you have some some curve like this, which has two endpoints. Now given by f f a uh, and, and g a, and this is f b and uh, g b point. So again, you connect these two points by the line. Now suppose that G A and G B are different, and suppose that also uh, derivative of G is always uh, non-zero, which is uh, which should not be true here. Uh, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I I think somewhere here the derivative of G is zero, but uh, I suppose we are not in we are not in this case, but. Yeah, so so the uh, so in, in in such a case it could happen that other one would satisfy it. But what what holds is that always you will find a point C in which the tangent will be same as as these two. Tangents. So you have many many points like like this here, which, which satisfy this.
Yeah, so uh, yeah, but uh, you need you need some other some other conditions. It could it could happen that that uh, solution of of this uh, won't exist for for some.